Hello everyone and welcome to this week's reviews. It's time to once again go into the world of Netflix with a latest acquisition, a futuristic animated film about a girl who befriends a robot trying to understand the world he has just discovered. This is Next Gen. Watching this movie, it's easy to figure out plenty of influences the filmmakers had. There are nods to Big Hero 6, Blade Runner, WALL-E, and the works of Osama Tezuka, particularly Astro Boy. However, despite those familiar elements, directors Kevin R. Adams and John Cassanda devise a solid story with a lot of creativity. For one thing, I appreciate that they avoid the post-apocalyptic tropes common with films set in the future. This is a really nice looking city with technological advancements that help the citizens more than harm them, although there is that uncomfortable element of these being sentient beings programmed to do specific tasks and serve the people. There's not as much social commentary here as one might expect. The best part about this movie is the relationship that forms between Robot 7723 and the lead protagonist May. I like that May is shown to be a rather flawed character, and she goes through some rather tough emotions and decisions over the course of the runtime. There is some genuine development here from both her and 7723. There's also a message about how technology does aid us, but we should not just rely solely on it. Ironic from a movie being distributed by a company known for its streaming, but it's a good lesson to have nonetheless. The animation is also quite lovely, with some truly impressive shots throughout, and the action scenes are directed with the proper amount of pizzazz. While there is a familiarity to Next Gen, there are still some twists to the story, and it's not afraid of having major stakes that affect the characters emotionally. In the end, this movie is on Netflix, and it's worth giving a watch. Netflix is investing quite heavily in animation, and if their films continue to be of this quality, we're in for some real treats in the future. Next up, Paul Feig takes a bit of a departure from his usual comedy with Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively caught up in a mystery. This is a simple favor. Feig seems to have become known for his improvisation-heavy comedies in recent years, and while some of his trademarks show up in a simple favor, it nonetheless provides something slightly different. This movie is essentially two halves. One is about the growing friendship that forms between Kendrick's perky mother Stephanie and Lively's mysterious model, Emily. A lot of early scenes involve them just chatting, and it's genuinely engaging. It also works due to the contrast of Kendrick's sunny personality hanging out with this woman who is anything but. Feig also finds humor out of her web show, which is being shown on this mock-up of YouTube, and there are some funny little sight gags on the screen. As the movie plays on, the plot gets more and more absurd, and I really admired how it went in certain directions. The movie does leave you guessing, and again, it's funny seeing Kendrick embroiled in this mystery of what happened to Emily. Andrew Reynolds also has a great supporting role as another parent at the school, observing the entire situation and interpreting it from an outsider's perspective. A simple favor does run into a frequent trap I do find with Paul Feig films, and that is about 20 minutes too long. For some reason, you really start to feel the length of his movies upon entering the third act. I still really enjoyed where the movie went, but the editing could have used some snipping here and there. Nonetheless, it's great to see Feig stretching his wings, and Kendrick and Lively also deserve commending for their performances here. Thank you for watching this week's reviews, and I'll see you next time.